Episode 25, Decker's Port, Tower of the Mage. Imarcus jolted wide awake, the sudden sensation of dread flooding his veins. The after-images of fragmented dreams passed through the landscape of his mind. Ghostly forms haunted the shadows of his memory. A new Terran warlord had arisen. It had built a terrible army through a series of wars deep in Hollow Realm. With him came an unusual dragon, also a gargantuan creature that carried fortifications. A race of evil dwarves in the underworld had provided the warlord six of their magical floating battle fortresses. Imarcus had seen the warlord as a great serpent dragon, even now poking its head above the surface as its neck stretched back to a body of army still amassing in the deep. He had seen trains of chained slaves from the surface races, snaking for many miles over the plains, through hills, forests, and mountains, and falling into the blackness of the underworld. A massive road was cleared and laid from the funnel web cave entrances where the warlord brought up his hosts from Hollow Realm to the surface in dark frost peaks. Slaves were worked to death in the clearing and labor and then fed to the slogs. Those prisoners that lived were escorted to Sarthaldon City and fed to the black tree, the limbs of darkness in the deep. Imarca shuddered. In his dream state, he had seen a huge underworld complex made of bones, a deep temple in a cavern with a wicked pool where was worshipped some ancient goddess, an oracle. From it, the warlord learned many things, but it was an image from underneath the old city of Talandithar that had held his attention. Now, sitting up in the tower, as silent as possible, he dared not breathe, lest he lose this phantom memory. What sort of creature is this? The elderly battle mage looked through his recollections of the moment at the dim image of a muscular form burned into his mindscape. The figure had blue skin, was broad-shouldered but tall and strange. An upturned small horn marked its nose. Something dangerous heads for Talandathar, and this creature has released my spell. The panel in the elevator, elevator shaft below Talandathar had been tampered with, and there was a blue-skinned stranger wandering beneath the ruins. And Amaricus knew what this meant. There is nothing to go down to but the Oroclon. The old man jumped out of his bed wide awake and strode over to the western window. The fields all the way up to the tree line of Arbor Realm was serene in the dark of night, normal. But beyond the limits of sight came an ancient evil, a prehistoric and vile hatred. The wizard could feel it. Only by the act of gods did he survive a similar time long ago. The controversy over mankind was about to begin, and Imarcus knew that the battles of old were but a taste of the war to come. The ex-Polterian arch-battle mage was 63 years old, or so it seemed. In fact, he was much older. A thin film of sweat covered his skin, but he did not notice. Closing his eyes in the cool breeze, he remembered that dark day so long ago when he had been forced by fate to make a terrible decision involving the lives of many who hung in the balance. Someone had just activated the spell he had cast centuries ago to prevent anyone from entering the Oroclon complex. That someone represented a new player in the old game, an unknown variable, and he had destroyed the undead that Imarcus had summoned to guard the lift. The spectral form of the figure again flashed through his mind. Tears watered the wizard's cheeks. Those humans left behind had been his closest friends and colleagues, 
and this made their fate all the more tragic. After over a year of traveling, the Pulterians and his expedition had made it to the lift below Talandathar. A group that started at 61 people was reduced to seven survivors, six of which were at the disc while the seventh was completing a mission. So many travels, sacrifices, close calls, traps avoided, fighting through enemy domains, beating back ambushes, sickness, and even hunger. The cost, the long planning, the heroics all came to nothing. In the end, Imaricus had killed them all. A renowned hunter, a ranger of border realm, a woman, one of the last Polterian enchantresses of the Order of Solaris, and Heath, the last true dragon slayer, wielder of the famous blade, Ixacor, and two others, all murdered by the wizard's unexpected treachery. Imaricus, often called the Far Away, had killed the entire party to prevent humanity from reaching the Oroclon. It had been he who had assembled the group, acquired each participant's individual confidence. On that fateful day, the Polterians with Imaricus among them all waited on the disc for the dragon slayer Heath to appear. He had been teleported many miles away to the lair of a black dragon named Naviniz the Bold, having been sent to fight the aged dragon for possession of the Oroclon tablet. Naviniz was the last worm of the ancient protectorate of Deathalon, a black dragon in service to the Cadorians, allied to the original rangers of Border Realm. Heath had defeated Naviniz in combat and had called out to Amaricus as they had schemed. But when the deed was done, the tablet secure, Amaricus ignored him. The old wizard was frozen with indecision. A battle of another kind raged within the wizard's mind as he mulled over the implications of activating the Oricon. He had been poisoned by morality amidst a call of duty. The reasons the Polterians set out to activate the Oroclon were no longer valid, for the fairies of Dagothar had since committed a great sacrifice in the defense of men. The Fey Alliance had been a success, and the hosts of the Underworld were not going to pass Border Realm and invade Polteria. The threat was over, but the King's orders were still to be obeyed. Wearing a ring of teleportation that only Imaricus knew how to operate, the faithful dragon slayer obtained the tablet, and from inside the lair, he called Imaricus' name out loud. Navinus, Navinus, wounded, defeated, listened. He was far from dead. In his mind, the wizard remembered the call of Heath as a five-and-a-half-century-old echo. Seconds later, the great venerable black worm swallowed Heath whole, tablet and all. Two breaths later, Imarcus released the spell that killed all of the attacking ogres under Talandathar, following it by a more humane spell that killed him. It killed his own party instantly as they stood on the disc platform elevator. His third spell cast a necral enchantment to guard the lift that someone, something, had recently activated. Staring through centuries haunted eyes out over the land outside the Tower of Decker's Port, a land soon to be ravaged by war, he bowed his head with understanding. The old wizard knew that the future was a reflection of the past. The Polterians know the prophecies. Among them is one of the House of Arcanacraft. He thought it ironic that he no longer felt himself Polterian. Imaricus pondered over the return of the broken moon, knowing that in this year it was coming, though still as yet unseen in the sky. A blade magus aboard a ship called Seeker of the Ancient Lost had a priestess of the Order of the Broken Moon aboard. They're going to Talandathar. The blue-skinned, muscular stranger, a race of which Amaricus had never seen nor heard about, meddled about the ruins beneath the ancient city. The way has been prepared for the Polterians. He knew that their stop at the ancient ruins of Deathalon in Old Cadoria was only a necessary aside. 
Long ago in a distant year that also saw the visitation of the broken moon and the emergence of the first warlord, Immaricus II had led his crew into the temple precinct of Deathalon, the archaic city of the Bowmaster race. Remembering his studies, the old one recalled the prophecy. In the 552nd year of the uprising, will the deep rise again. By will of the navigator shall seven among men be drawn back to the place of the beginning. Codex Caria 144 A new uprising was underway, and he had seen these terrible armies scouring the lands far to the west through the windows of his dreams. Another warlord, the return of the broken moon, and another Polterian expedition. He had stopped nothing, only delayed. Immarca stilled, feeling dreadfully that this year was not going to end like the other had. Immarcus was 615 years old, and he suspected that this was going to be his last. His mind wandered back to the rest of the prophecy, and he shuddered. The Polterians are going to end it all. He withdrew a chain around his neck with a small key that he had used to open a small maple box of considerable age covered in dust. Wiping it off, he opened the odd box with the tarnished key and he, and he removed a bundle of colorful carrion cloth and went over to sit at the desk. Unwrapped, it revealed an exquisitely carved white ivory dragon statuette with neat initials I and B etched on its back. Immaricus held the dragon up, inspecting the craftsmanship, admiring the details. Old friend, he whispered, come. He slammed the fragile statue on the hard wood of the desk and felt the unseen force of an old spell flit away. He gathered the pieces back together into the cloth and set them in the box, closing the lid. Far away, Deep in the wooded haunts of Border Realm, there was a stirring among the fairies from Feynot on the water to Tree Helm, an arbor realm as far as Everleaf Pines and into the deep of Enchandrus. Ever sensitive to the operation of old magic, the Fey knew its source. They knew Immaricus, and they worried. I cannot help you this time, my friends. Slowly, but with force, a firm resolve set upon him and his heartbeat struggled to catch up with his thoughts. This meditation was interrupted when the chamber door opened unexpectedly and candlelight spilled in from the hall. Master, are things well? Sifan appeared in the doorway, still wearing his nightcap. Immarcus looked at the town clerk, his own apprentice, as if he was a man far off. Sifan had been his student in the arts of the craft for twenty years, and through their conversations and sharing of very old books, the apprentice knew more about the histories of the outlands of Border Realm and its denizens than any would believe. Save for Sifan, only the monk Inuki knew, knew the true identity of the old wizard in the tower at the edge of Decker's port. Only recently had Decker been made privy to the secret. Bring me the deed to the tower, the papers of estate, the drafts you have of my holdings in Decker's bank, and the key to the lower vault, and come quickly. Sifan's eyes widened at the urgency in the old wizard's voice and the unusual request, especially for so late an hour. He rushed to retrieve the documents and the key. While Sifan was gone, Immarcus gathered what few things he would need for his journey. He would be signing over the parcels of land, the tower, and his wealth over to his faithful apprentice. From a false bottom shelf under his desk, he pulled out a concealed scroll case that he was going to give to Sifan. It was written in an extinct cipher he had taught Sifan over the years. Inside were instructions on how to find the secret vault in the lower casemate, where Immaricus had hidden his most treasured books. Literary relics from distant antiquity, his own notebooks on spellcraft, and a thick tome with bands of iron and a lock. This book was forbidden, 
and Sifan had no idea that his master possessed such a legendary text. The Odagathus Yithomalacruel. Also in the vault were a collection of objects, enchanted, charmed, that he wanted the younger wizard to have. These items would be no loss to himself, for Imaricus knew that he would not be returning. I must undo what I have done. Sifan burst back into the chamber, almost out of breath, papers in hand, tightly gripping the key. He saw instantly that Imaricus was gearing up for a journey. He spread the parchment out on the table next to a gigantic book he had never seen before, titled with his master's own handwriting, Chronicle of Dagothar. What goes on, master? I will be leaving, Sifan, alone. The apprentice's eyes widened in alarm. The wizard continued, I sign everything over to you. The key is yours and everything in the vault. The scroll will show you how to access the hidden panel. This book, Imarcus' withered hand, gently flattened on Chronicle of Dagathar. This book is the only copy in the world. It contains the histories, the prophecies, the hidden causes of why and what our world is. The secrets of Dagathar, past and present, are within these pages. This record of annals is the sum of a score of the oldest history books in all of Dagathar, and even records from Eroth beyond. Sifan stared at the thick volume, dread and wonder, curiosity and despair, all warring within him. This was so sudden, the departure of his master, his friend, so out of the ordinary. He immediately thought of the departure of Inuki, who was set on joining the Polterians with Yurik Arcanacraft. You will read this chronicle, Sifan, and you will understand. Further, I set this task before you to finish the record, to record all that will unfold this year. Once completed, you will make a copy and deliver it to Castle Demerskold for their library. A second copy you will deliver to Vanica de Vordred, known throughout Polteria as Lady Underground. Your own copy is the third, to keep safe with all these books I now pass on to you. But, but to where I can train you no more, an apprentice you are only in name. You were ready to wear the mantle years ago. Be still. There is need for me at the Court of Elder Bows. This concludes Episode 25.